Okay, jujitsu as a self-defense program. We did part one with Robert Drysdale, uh, and we went over a little bit of the history of jujitsu, and we also went into some of the aspects of self-defense. On this part, part two, we'll be uh, going into much more uh, on the self-defense side, some of the pros and cons, and uh, you know why people you know gravitate to jujitsu. Um, again, this is a this interview just really, it's just dense. It just has a lot of really good information on it. It'll really help all of you that are come from the BJJ community and have been asking me questions about, you know, how to integrate self-defense in your BJJ. Um, can't get a better guy than Robert. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, make sure you do that. Um, you know, we went over that. We talked about Robert's uh, book that he has coming out, uh, Opening the Closed Guard. It's already out. Um, the documentary itself, Closed Guard, should be coming out soon. He has a couple of legal issues he's still tying up. But again, remember, this guy, you know, is one of the top competitors when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Obviously, one of the top American c competitors. His uh, bona fides, you know, went over them in the first video. Highly suggest you see that. Um, but, you know, he, he, he's trained some top, top people. And he really looks at the subject very succinctly, and, and I think you're going to really enjoy this. So we get right into it here in this second part, and uh, let's do it. Well, I've seen it in the military side. I've never seen anything, because I was there at the beginning when the Gracies came in and started training with the military. I've never seen such a cultural takeover of any type of a martial art or, or genre. The military guys absolutely love it. They love the competition, the community. Yeah. It reinforces everything that they do. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that's how you and I met. You know, we met originally with some of my Aussie Special Forces friends that, that uh, worked with you. And and that whole thing, when I travel around, there's nothing like the, the community of, of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. People, and within there, you meet some amazing people. So I, I, I totally understand that. I think what you touched on, um, you know, one of the interesting things that, that I try to tell people all the time about going to the ground it is on a one-on-one -on -one situation. It dominates. All my kids are, are, are doing BJJ. This. They're starting. It's going to be their base, especially my girls. I want yeah, them to get used to be getting grabbed, and and feel confident that way. So I think it's an outstanding base. Where you have to, to touch base is exactly what you're talking about. The majority of deaths in street fights and bar fights and things happen when the person is on the ground, and people are, or other people are kicking in because they're able to deploy all their body weight into yeah. you and you cannot move your body weight at that time. So you're going to absorb everything when you're on the ground. So that's a consideration. But I think what's interesting is I think everybody's trying to do this either or. And I think you can get tremendous benefits from if you've never grappled. And I consider you not just BJ. I consider you truly a grappler, you know, I mean, because you know all aspects of it. I think grappling is, is something that is a great base for everybody to have because there's the biggest fear people have is being dominated that way. And, but then to extrapolate beyond it, I think is, is even more important, especially in, in recognizing the variables you're talking about. No, a hundred percent. Like I, I never, I would never say that BJJ by itself is a complete form of self-defense. Like there are people that argue that I'm like, cause there is knife defense, but it's the same almost everywhere, you know, like, you know, take a gun stuff. It's like very similar, but it's not practiced. So, and the other thing is, you know, it, it's, it's problematic because, you know, you don't even know, again, you don't know how many people you're fighting. You don't always know, and especially in a nightclub or a bar where a lot of most of my experience in fights happen in those environments, right? You have to be very good at awareness of like who you're fighting, if they have a gun or not, and how many people you're fighting, all these things, and thinking quickly and developing a strategy quickly. And most martial arts gyms in the world are not preparing you for that period, right? And that's my take on it. Um, I think that, you know, once again, having that, the, 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 the contact, the, 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 the friction, the conflict, right? That right there is going to prepare you. Um, that's missing in most curriculums from my experience. Um, I think MMA is a great foundation. For, well, again, if we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, right. MMA is great because it's very complete. And it has, it, it has absorbed over the years the back to martial arts. Yeah. Because it doesn't work, it gets weeded out, right? It's a selection process. And MMA keeps the very best. Um, but again, it doesn't factor in guns, knives. There's a, like, there's a whole new world there. I normally joke that the best form of self-defense is track and field. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, I rec even like if you're a professional fighter, right. depending on the circumstances, like running really is the best. And what would be the benefit to a professional fighter taking you know part in something like that? I absolutely agree. It's how you make your money. It's how you, yeah. how you are. Oh, you get sued too if you win. Well, that's <laughs> you just, better yeah, lose. That's, that's the other thing too. Uh, you know, it's very it, there's 
there's no real upsides to it. And um, it, it's, it's interesting when guys are mature enough to figure that out. You know, you see some of the younger fighters sometimes don't get it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it gets them in tremendous trouble sometimes. Um, what have you found, like, like the, I'm always interested about the culture of Brazil. The culture of Brazil, I mean, obviously there's a lot of violence in, in Brazil yeah. and various parts. It's a beautiful country. The people are amazing. I mean, some yeah. of the friendliest people in the world. How did, what was the difference between immersing yourself in Brazilian culture, also immersing yourself in true Brazilian jiu-jitsu from, so, you know, top sources that aren't really available here, yeah. or at the time at least. Um, and, and what's it like to go from an, a culture in Brazil to coming back to the U.S. and then the U.S. culture um, in regards to, you know, violence and how, how quickly, is there a difference that you notice? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like uh, Brazil, the thing is when you grow up in Brazil, you kind of develop this sixth sense. You kind of know where you're at. Like, you know, <laughs> you develop this 360 awareness right. that you kind of lose when you're in the U.S. because it's fairly safe here in comparison, yeah. right? Like I've never had anything close to an incident. In Brazil, you have to be watching the whole time, right? So you, it's, it becomes, if you live there, it's safer, it's weird, because you develop that awareness, you know what to do, what not to do. It's like, you know, it's a lot of times that people that don't have this awareness that get mugged, or they put their guard down at some point, which happens, right? Um, but like, it's, Brazil's a very interesting place to me because I swear they're the happiest people in the world, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know how to have fun. Like, you, it doesn't matter how bad things are. Like, you know, there's a problem in the US, like we had COVID and like people are fighting over toilet paper. Yeah. Like I've had in my hometown, like where we have like two or three months of no water yeah. and no one's killing them. They're, they're like, they're, they're, they, 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 they figure it out in a way and they can even make a joke about it. Right. They're very resilient people in, in that sense. Um, but again, there's, you know, the violence is a huge problem there. there there's no doubt. I've had to use jujitsu in the past there, but again, I know where I'm at and I know, you know, like, you know, you have to gauge the situation before you and even, cause normally you just want to run away. But like sometimes if you, if it's a situation where you're not at risk, you know, the person doesn't have a gun or a knife right. and it is one-on-one, -on -one, then I've, I've had to use it before. But, um, but for the most part, I mean, Brazil is a very, it's a very happy place, a very happy people. They know how to party. They know how to have fun. They, they don't need alcohol for it either. Right. They don't need to be in a nightclub. They know how to have a good time. But there's, you know, it's one of those places where it's very, it was an amazing experience growing up there. Now, most of my competition, I'm probably the foreigner, the non-Brazilian who's competed the most in Brazil. I don't think there's anyone else who's competed in Brazil more than me. You know, I lived there for so long. But it's, um, it's not a place I would want to, you know, raise my kids to be honest. Even though it's a very, as a child, it can be a lot, very happy. Yeah. It's also very dangerous. So there's those two sides. Yeah, trade off. Yeah, you, um, that's an interesting thing that you just said about, uh, about growing up there and immersing yourself and being a foreigner in Brazil. Did they, even though you had a Brazilian mother, did they, they treat you as an American? It's some environments, like when I first meet people, I'm immediately, because I'm, you know, I'm white, I got right. light eyes, my name is Robert Drysdale, I, I don't, I stand out, I always stood out. You know, if I'm, once I'm in with like six months in, they're like, okay, this guy's Brazilian. So they accept me as right. Brazilian after, but immediately I'm always, a, I'm always, I've been a gringo my whole life. Right. And it's funny, when I first moved here, I was a gringo as well, it's full on Brazilian, I'm a gringo in both countries. <laughs> um, but after a while, people sort of like, now people that know me, take me as American and my Brazilian friends who know me, they take me as Brazilian, right? People that don't know me very well, they always assume I'm the other culture. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's actually really cool. Okay, so <clears throat> there was a lot of good stuff in there about, you know, how, you know, the, the idea, like we've always talked, you know, we talk about the idea of the duel and that's what most people think when it comes to self-defense. And it's really, it's really refreshing to have somebody like Robert, who's top competitor, um, you know, sits there and says, Hey, yeah, one-on-one -on -one, we're, we're in good shape, but you know, the variables that, that you have to take into account. And it, it's just a very sobering fact that, that a lot of people want, you know, the, the draw, and we're going to talk more about this in the next one. The draw of BJJ is it's an outstanding community, man. I mean, every guy I know that does BJJ and I, I know mostly men, there are a lot of women do it too, but most of my friends are men, um, that do it. They, they just love the community. You know, it's, it's just amazing. And I get that aspect of it. The, the danger part of it is when you think it's a one size fits all. And I think Robert's done a really good job of laying out, Hey, this, the, the strengths of it. And then some of the things you got to be concerned about, some of the things you want to fill in. So I hope this is helping, uh, some of our BJJ watchers and, uh, getting some good info out of this. The next two parts are, are awesome. You're going to get some really, really good stuff out of that. So, um, thanks for watching. Remember guys. You know, 
it would really help you if you go to surviveviolence.com, put your email in, give us, you know, a, uh, um, a chance to give you a free masterclass, lots of great content. You also make sure that you always get all the announcements early, anything that's going on, any of the subject matter experts you see on this channel, we'll be making sure that if they have announcements, we'll put it out to you. Um, cause we want to keep you with the most relevant up-to-date information. And the best way to do that is to go to survivebalance.com. Also, please subscribe, give us a like, give us a, a, a follow on here and uh, notification. And, and most importantly, you know, even if it's one video, if there's one video here that you've seen, send it out to a bunch of your friends, you know, say, hey, check this out. It really, really helps us grow the channel. And I appreciate all of the growth that we've had. And it's because of you guys. So again, until, uh, until part three, be safe.